Prime Minister, welcome to Singapore. Thank you so much for joining us for this special episode of CNA Correspondent. Um, now, when you first took office in November last year, you introduced the concept of Malaysia Madani. Now, 10 months on, how would you gauge public's reception and acceptance of this narrative? Have they caught on? We we'll have to continue to disseminate information, but I, I think consistently uh, the team, ministers, public servants have been um, explaining, but more importantly is to associate with specific uh, reforms uh, and policies, economic, econo uh, energy transition, industrial master plan, and through that I think um, we'll generate better understanding. You also recently tabled the midterm review of the 12th Malaysia Plan in, in Parliament, allocating at least 90 billion ringgit uh, a year from 2023 to 2025 to align with the Madani government's economic goals. Now, analysts have called this highly ambitious. Um, can this all be achieved you know, in the next two, two and a half years? Well, highly ambitious in relation to what we have done in the past. But um, the entire thrust of the revision and uh, midterm review is to make major adjustments uh, or paradigm shift. And I think uh, would be able to generate a lot of interest, not only the, among the cabinet members, but more so uh, the private sector and also the public sector. The way we are doing business, the ease of doing business, the accelerated pace of approvals, the interest by the uh, investment public companies, and that would certainly help accelerate the process. So I don't believe, therefore, it is far too ambitious, but you require uh, an additional um, focus and a commitment by the uh, civil, uh, public servants. Mm. Uh, Prime Minister Anwar, you have unveiled not just one, but two very ambitious master plans, the new industrial master plan that you mentioned and also the new energy transition roadmap um, aiming to put Malaysia on the stronger economic uh, growth path to achieve high income nation under your watch. Now how different is this round going to be? Are you going to have the stamina and the resolve to push through some of the tough reforms like weaning off the people years of subsidies, you know, and lifting the people's wages, addressing some of the tough structural problems? Let me deal first with the subsidies. And we have first to uh, impress upon the general public that uh, the country cannot or continue with this total dependence on um, obsolete policies of just giving out handouts, subsidies, which is no longer tenable. And uh, we have tried, for example, by introducing this um, transition and uh, through. Um, subsidy rationalization in the electricity sector and uh, we have kept it to the richest uh, to be able to pay the normal rate and subsidy for the poorer sector and uh, this would continue to the other areas but more importantly also is the amount of leakages and waste if this can be stopped the amount of subsidy which can be saved will uh, amount to billions of uh, ringgit Secondly, on the issue of uh, plan, see, industry master plan, well crafted by the uh, MITI in particular, and uh, mission based, and focus on key areas which would be able to propel the industry and the economy. Similarly, the issue in the energy transition. We have renewable energy, we have gas, we have, you know, but unfortunately, we have no clarity in terms of specific plans. So we have then worked out a plan for energy transition, we call the NETR, that would be able to uh, impress the general public and the investors that there is a niche in this country which benefit the economy immensely, uh, but also which meets the requirements of a green um, energy uh, transition which uh, is uh, critical for Malaysia and for the world. Mm. And all these transitional roadmaps needs time, you know, and staying the course is key. Do you have the stamina and the resolve to see it through, first of all? Well, this for nine months plus, things seem to be moving at a fast pace. Can you imagine um, for a country that have somehow <clears throat> been in, in a state of uh, uncertainty 
politically, economically, no clarity even in policies. But in nine months, we have introduced major policy changes, policy drive, and, it, and, and it's not certainly easy, and it uh, would involve the entire uh, government machinery and, uh, and the support of the private sector. Energy transition is a major program, and the uh, industry must have planned. And, and now, of course, the Maradi economy, um, prior to that, but now we are moving towards, uh, other than the midterm review of the draft message plan, is the budget, which is coming soon in October. Sri, a lot of political observers are also saying that the government has all these big plans, like what you were talking about earlier, but that it appears to be constantly distracted by domestic political uh, issues. How do you plan to address this perception? After the series of by-elections, I have refrained uh, from giving political comments. I have largely ignored them and just focused on these policies. Even in the um, midterm review of the 12th Malaysia plan uh, in Parliament, I spoke for one and a half hours explaining all these policies. I have uh, not used that to um, score any political point or uh, criticize the opposition. Well, they have not responded in that manner, notwithstanding. I think I will get my team just to focus on the economy and the changes that is required. But considering that there's a lot of political challenges and threats coming from the opposition, um, will your government be open to exploring any sort of a CSA or a similar agreements to, sh to ensure political stability, at least in the next coming years before GE? Well, firstly, there is political stability. I mean, to have um, one for eight to two third, and we have one for seven, is a strong majority. Why is it that we are so... I mean, generally, I, mean, I tell my colleague, why are you so particular and so obsessed about having a two-third majority? Sometimes uh, a government can survive with uh, responsible opposition. And um, the, the issue of MOU or CSA has been there on the table from the beginning. Um, we, it's up to the opposition to respond. They're just asking for perks and... Uh, projects and uh, funds, but not uh, negotiations. And this is not, of course, a mature uh, process in a democratic setup. Uh, I always use the term democratic uh, accountability because um, it is both for the government and the opposition to understand. Yeah, but the fact remains is um, winning back the crucial Malay support is still a challenge for you and for your government. Uh, seen in the last state, state elections, the trajectory shows that Malay majority continue to vote for the opposition per Ikatan Nasional. Now, do you think that with your number two, Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zaid Hamidi now been dismissed of all corruption charges, that will somewhat bring back support from the Malays? There's no relevance. I mean, the issue is purely an uh, issue before the Attorney General and the court. Uh, whether it would help um, re-energize Malay support or not, to me, is not a consideration. But what is um, a problem it has to be acknowledged. Yes, we have had this um, rather shocking and, to an extent, worrying phenomena of this wave of um, uh, support f by the Malays to the Islamic Party and the Malay Nationalist Party. Uh, that is concerning because um, you use the race and religious card. 
and you ignore issues of governance, of corruption, of economic policies, will it last? No. I think um, would suggest that we need to um, engage more and deal with the issues of race and religion. You see, the race card has been used, and majority of them are Malays, and they say, you know, okay, Anwar is fine, but then uh, what about the issue of um, survival of the Malays and uh, Islam? We will have to engage with them. Despite your assurance, despite your assurance, people are concerned, you know. Aren't you worried that this, you know, with a series of DNAA or the discharge not amounting to uh, acquittal involving key politicians, wouldn't it cast doubt on your efforts to rid corruption, on your reform pledges? We yeah, accept them, Lisa, because, because we have inherited that system, which is quite rotten. The perception is that, well, you are going to go back to um, that known system. Uh, by previous Prime Ministers. So any decision by the AG will be suspect. Uh, but what do they expect? Do, do you expect me to then influence the AG against his decision? No. The decision was made by the AG, appointed by the previous Prime Minister. My he did. was not appointed by me. But do you think the AG owes the people an explanation? Because the Bar Council, the opposition, the Rakyat, the people in general, the civil societies, they continue to ask why, you know, there is no proper explanation, no transparency, no accountability. They have a right to ask, but it's not true to say there was no proper explanation. Eleven reasons were given uh, to the court and the court was satisfied. If the AG decided, of course I was informed and I was a bit tough with him, I said you have to be uh, sure that you can explain and say, yes, we've explained to the court. Mm. Can it be satisfying? Some, no, it will not. Because the perception is that once you are prime minister, you will continue to act like previous prime ministers. Um, and uh, I have, uh, you know, time will tell. Uh, given some time, they would understand that I. I I am determined to make sure that this country uh, uh, become a mature, responsible democracy, uh, accountable and uh, clear separation of powers between the executive and judiciary. But on that note, Dr. Sri, because you know, surveys have shown that there is this lack of trust in the institution because of political volatility in Malaysia over the last five years, with the, cons the leadership constantly changing. So. How do you plan to rebuild that trust mm. with the Rakyat? Precisely, that's why I said even in the Madani concept, Amana, rebuilding trust is a major thing. Because for the last not few years, decades, people have seen once you become a leader, you will amass wealth. You see? And, and uh, without exception, you have prime ministers uh, and ministers amassing wealth. And you can't expect people to trust you because the moment you are Prime Minister, you must be very <laughs> rich and you're with, with your exorbitant and uh, flamboyant lifestyles. But this has to change. Um, but it will be given time. Because now they get confused. Well, yeah, but Anwar is using the government jet. Yeah. What else do I do? But it will take time because the, the cynicism is due to the um, failure of political leaders in the past uh, to prove that um, leadership must be accountable and, and corruption cannot be deemed to be a system, uh, a culture and systemic, which is the case in Malaysia. So it will take time. I understand that. That's why I'm not too excited or too worried when I do receive lots of criticism. I say, OK, be patient. We'll have to explain. And, I, and um, even in presentation in Parliament, I've been extremely cool about it. I listen um, to the barrage of attacks and will uh, then use um, the opportunity at a later stage to then respond.
We're always curious because I think you've meant, it's been speculated that while former Prime Minister Najib Raza is in jail, um, Jolo, the alleged mastermind, is still at large. Is he in China? I don't know for certain, mm -hmm. but certainly I will explore because um, yeah, we have to bring him back. Do you foresee great difficulty in, in extraditing him and bringing him back to... Thus far, we don't know where he is. I mean, I've asked the intelligence and security personnel, well, um, with his uh, contacts and his uh, enormous wealth, they can always do a lot of things uh, to him and uh, change him for the matter. And I, I don't know, I'm not in a position to say more except for the fact that we are determined. Whether it's Joe Law or Goldman Sachs, we will get, try and get as much back as possible. I understand there's been some difficulty in getting Roger Ng, the uh, former chief Malaysia of Goldman Sachs, back. Um, we want him back. Malaysia wants him back to be in Malaysia to face the music. What sort of problem Malaysia government is facing? No, we're in the process of negotiations, um, working with the United States. Um, the OG has been quite uh, cooperative, and the and, and I'm optimistic that that can be done. Mm. And why is it important to have him back? Because he knows a lot. Mm -hmm. He was in charge and uh, involved in many of these deals. So I think um, he should be able to assist us in that sense. But as far as Goldman Sachs is concerned, they haven't been paying. What can Malaysia do? Will you follow up with your threat to take no, them to we, court? No, we have made very clear that we are pursuing this. Mm -hmm. uh, they have not been forthcoming, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But um, they can't take us for a ride. Uh, I have said consistently, and I will reiterate, that um, Goldman Sachs was complicit in this entire financial um, Malfions, and they have to be accountable. That's us if we can move on to a bit of uh, geopolitics, China and the US. Talking about these two superpowers, um, what specific role is Malaysia playing in terms of navigating the tricky waters and what sort of opportunities can arise from this uh, power rivalry and how can Malaysia benefit from it? Well, we are fiercely independent. Um, we um, are close to China, and it's an important trading uh, nation. It uh, and and the investments have been increasing exponentially. But we have been traditionally a great friend of the United States. I had great discussions with Kamala Harris, uh, who was seated beside me during dinner in Jakarta, and and um, I'm pleased to hear from her that how. Uh, President Biden and the leadership seems to be, you know, wanting to engage further uh, with me and uh, view Malaysia as a great uh, friend. But beyond that, I don't think we should be super ambitious. Um, we are relatively a smaller country, smaller player, and we are part of ASEAN. They have taken that um, centrality uh, as its core principle to work with all parties, uh, including China in the United States. So how should ASEAN play its cards then, um, you know, with intense power rivalry and it's not going away, you know, and yet um, emerge, you know, maintain its neutrality? We must continue to engage. We engage very well in, uh, during the ASEAN meeting um, uh, in Jakarta with uh, Premier Lee Chiang and Japan and Korea and then with uh, Kamala Harris mm -hmm. and Australia and the other countries. And I think we should continue this sort of engagement. So Malaysia takes a position that we, we, we welcome. We welcome the West, we welcome China, whoever can help um, improve and enhance technological capabilities of Malaysia, whoever can contribute, we will support. We are not, therefore, guided by decisions taken by any so-called superpower. Thank you so much, Prime Anwar, for joining us this morning. Thanks. Really appreciate your time. Mm -hmm.